Hello everybody, I want to show you with this video 10 first things to do for the Redmi Note 13 Pro and Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G. And the first thing I want to show you is a little sidebar. You're almost invisible, you can easily swipe it in and you're having now quick access here to your favorite apps. Pretty nice. But don't wonder if you doesn't see this um, little icon here actually because you have to set it up first. But let's just go here on the settings. Then you need to scroll down to the point additional settings. And a bit below you will find the point floating windows. And you will have the point sidebar and you need to turn on the first point you always show. Huh? Just tap here so that it's marked blue and then you will have it here on the side. By the way, if this position is not comfortable for you, you can uh, easily put it to another position by just long pressing it. And then you can swipe it a bit below or up or even you can put it on the other side. Maybe if you're right-handed, it is a much better position because if you're right-handed, you can easily swipe it out now with one thumb and you're having now quick access here to your favorite apps. And what is also pretty nice, you open these apps here in a floating window. Now, whatever you want to have, may let's open your WhatsApp, and then you have this little floating window. And you can also move this pop up to another position here by just tapping on three points and hold it and put it on another position. And then you can check your messages while doing something else on the phone or watching a YouTube video or whatever app you have opened. Now, if you want to close this little pop up here, just tap on the three points, go on the X and hit it scan. Pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, there's some more nice gestures and one of it is if you're using your phone with one hand. Now, you can't reach the top here so well with your thumb, uh, but there's a nice trick to have it a bit lower here on the screen. For that, just use the navigation bar and swipe from the inside to the outside. And the upper screen is going a bit lower now and you're having now much better access here to the top of the screen. But don't wonder if this feature doesn't work at you right now because you have to enable it first. For that, just go to the settings. Then you need to scroll down to the point additional settings. Now just tap here on one handed mode and you need to enable it. Now just tap here, that's my blue as we have found. And that means whenever you swipe now from the middle of the navigation bar to the outside, anyhow, if it's to the left or to the right, then the upper screen is going a bit lower and now you have yeah, access here to the upper screen much easier. And if you don't want to have it, as we want to go back to the uh, main view, then just tap you on the outside and you're back in the regular view. Pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, apropos one-handed mode, uh, if you want to have the notification panel here, yeah, it's also not that easy to reach it, uh, but there's a nice way to have it by just double tapping here on the back of the phone and you're having it. Now double tap again, it's gone. Just double tap, it's there. Double tap, it's gone. Pretty, pretty nice. Now, but don't wonder if it doesn't work at you right now because you have to enable also this feature first. For that, just tap you on the settings. Then you need to scroll down to the point additional settings. And now you need the point gesture shortcuts. And at the end of the list, you will have the back tap. Huh? And yeah, set up here the double back tap or the triple back, <laughs> back tap and choose something. Huh? Uh, the notification shade for me is the best option. And that means whenever you double tap here on the back, you are having now the notifications. Pretty nice. And yeah, the next feature I want to show you is for our eyes because we are all using our smartphone too often and that is giving our eyes a lot of stress. But there's a way to reduce this eye strain. Let me show you how. For that, just go here to the settings. Then you need to check out for the point display and brightness. And a bit below you will find the point reading mode. And the reading mode is nothing else than a blue light filter. So just turn it on and uh, then you will see maybe a little yellow touch. So this is um, yeah, a sign for the blue light filter then. Huh? So and you have two options here, the cycle one. So it, uh, yeah, it's, it's about the, uh, uh, the app you're using or as well the times you're using the phone. But if you want to squeeze out the maximum of this blue light filter and if you want to do the best for your eyes, go with the classic mode. Okay, just enable it like this. And if you want to have more settings for that, just tap you on the arrow. Because here you can set up the color temperature. And as more warm the color temperature is, as better it is for your eyes. And a uh, nice note is as well that you will sleep much better with the blue light filter. No? Because in the evening hours or the night, if you're using a smartphone, then this is giving our eyes a lot of stress and it's not that good. No? It will affect your sleep in a negative way. So if you enable the blue light filter, you will sleep much better with it. 
If it really disturbs you, you can you can schedule it here as well. If you don't want to have it on the day, yeah, you can schedule that you have it only at night automatically. Yeah? For that, just turn the schedule on and take the first one, your good night suite. That means if the sun sets, the blue light filter will turn on. And if the sun rises, the blue light filter will automatically turn off and you don't have to set it up always by your own. There's something else what um, helps your eyes in the evening or in the night because if everything is dark around you and you're having this bright screen, it's also not that comfortable. I think you know what I mean. Huh? And there's a dark theme you can enable. Let's go back to the display settings. And on top you have the light mode, the, the regular one, or the dark mode. And if I enable the dark mode, you see now everything is dark behind and this contrast is much better for your eyes at night. But on the day it's not that comfortable because your eyes need more power to read then. Huh? This is why I recommend to you to only set it up here for the evening and the night. So just go here on dark mode options and switch it to dark mode. So turn it on and now um, yeah, it's automatically set up from sunset to sunrise. So pretty, pretty nice. So if the sun sets, the dark mode will turn on. And if the sun rises, the dark mode will turn off. By the way, the dark mode is pretty nice also for saving energy because we will have an OLED screen here at the phone. And that means that the dark areas, no, the pixels are just turned off the light. No? And it's saving a lot of energy. So pretty, pretty nice. And the next feature I want to show you is as well for our eyes. Pretty simple, but very effective. We're having a large screen and why not increasing the text size? Huh? Let me show you how for that. Just go here on the settings. Go again here on the point display and brightness. And a bit hidden here, you will find the point phone settings. And you can increase the text size. I've done it already that you can follow the video better. I recommend to you to don't go to the XXL mode because um, it affects the notification shade uh, because uh, the yeah the words are now too enlarged and you can't really well read well the notification. So just leave it here at L and it is much better. So nice. The next feature I want to show you is to save energy because every day we will have a time when we don't need our smartphone when we are sleeping. Huh? And you can set it up that your phone will turn off automatically and turn on automatically as well. Let me show you how for that. Just go on the settings, then check out the point battery and you will find additional features. And here below you have the point schedule power on off. So you can schedule a power on time and a power off time. Now you can as well choosing a repeating time if you want to have it every day or if you just want to have it weekdays. No? So maybe that if you want to have it during the week uh, at this time, but on the weekends a bit longer. But uh, let me tell you, if your phone turn off, you can easily turn it on again if you need your phone. So no problem. No? But you can't forget anymore to turn off the phone. And if you want to make sure that your phone is turned on in the morning, if you're waking up, just use also the first point to automatically power on the phone. And you can set up here as well a repeating time. So a pretty nice mode to save energy and giving your mind a bit peace. Then you can go a bit further and give your mind more peace uh, may also during a working times so or at your me times. No? Maybe if you want to watch at your me times here a movie on the phone, um, you sometimes feel disturbed by incoming messages. No? They appear on the screen and so on and you're out of the story no? or incoming calls no? and so on. So, but there's a way to put the phone also visually on silence. Let me show you how you can do that. For this, just go here to the settings, go here to the point sound and vibration. And a bit below you will have the point do not disturb. Huh? Of course, the incoming calls are muted, huh? but it's on then, but as well uh, also visually. So there will not appear uh, any messages any, as well, again or uh, during this time, no? the mode is enabled, or also uh, incoming calls and so on. So just turn it on. And um, what is pretty nice, you can give exceptions. Huh? So. I recommend to you to notify uh, about repeated calls because if someone is calling you twice within 15 minutes, uh, maybe it's an emergency call no? or someone really needs your help and that um, is good. If it's enabled, then 
the second call will come through. Uh, and you can also give some exceptions for your friends and so on uh, from start contacts or from your favorite or from selected contacts um, or from all your contacts. It's also possible. So uh, a pretty, pretty nice mode and it will give you much more peace and you can even schedule it if you want to have it maybe um, yeah, here at your working time. You can set up your times and so on. You can also set up more than one times uh, one time, is it correct, English? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so you know what I mean, so you can set up many do not disturb times. Um, yeah, a pretty nice mode. And by the way, if you want to have it quick and don't want to enter all the settings here, just swipe down here right next to the camera and then you have here the moon symbol. And this is um, the symbol here for the do not disturb mode to turn it on and off. The next feature I want to show you are gestures again, uh, here for our navigation bar. Uh, so we have actually the home button to be back always here at the home screen. We have the back button to go back one step or here the recent open tab button. But you can set up some more actions here on these buttons. Let me show you how. For well, that, just go to the settings. Then check out for the point home screen. And below we have the point system navigation. So in here you can go to the button shortcuts. Okay. So, and here you can choose uh, maybe what happened if you long press maybe one of these buttons. Now for the home button, we will have actually here the Google Assistant. Now you know this already, um, but we can set up also some actions here for the other buttons like the back button. Um, if you long press here, the back button, maybe we can give it here to turn on the torch. Now that means if you long press now the back button, we turn on the torch and if we long press it again, we turn off the torch. So many options here you can uh, change and for the good, very comfortable. Yeah, we are already at the end of the video and I want to show you one more gesture here. Uh, maybe you're having a nice scene and you want to take a picture of it. Uh, you need to look first for the camera app and this is taking a lot of time and made a nice scene scan. Uh, but you just need to double press the power button and you immediately add the camera. Pretty nice, huh? But don't wonder if this feature doesn't work at you right now because you have to enable it first. But let's just go you to the settings. Then you need to go to the additional settings. Check out for the point gesture shortcuts. Go now to the point launch camera. And the first point needs to be enabled huh? so that it's marked blue. And that means whenever you double press the power button, you're immediately at the camera without wasting time. And what is amazing, this works as well if your phone is on standby, huh? just double press the power button and you're immediately at the camera. And hey, may this save your great picture one day. Yeah, I hope I could help you with this video and give you uh, a nice setup here for your phone. And uh, yeah, maybe if you want, you can leave me a nice comment or give me something out. That would be very helpful for my videos. Uh, thank you so, so much for, and I've created also some other videos if you're interested in with some more tips and tricks and so on. You can also subscribe me if you haven't done it before. Thank you so, so much for all your support and yeah, maybe the next time. <laughs> Ciao.